Well, Jonathan Hoban, it's so lovely to have you with us. Um, thank you for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, we thought we'd start off just asking you generally what, what you do? What What is it that you do? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so, um, well, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm an integrative psychotherapist. So I work with lots of different types of models, therapeutic models, um, combined into one. And, um, and I started doing um, walking therapy, which is walking and talking in nature. So rather than sitting like this opposite uh, with a client opposite you, Getting out to nature, walking side by side is just, you know, it's less intimidating for the client. You know, you can sort of process thoughts and feelings far more um, kind of freely. And um, and yeah, just it, it's something I've, I mean, I love walking in nature anyway. Mm. So for me, it's just a, a great excuse to get out into nature as well. Mm. So wait, yeah. let me get, get this straight. So you actually walk with your cli- clients? Do we get, do yeah, we call them yeah, clients, clients. Patients? Yeah. You, so they'll come to see you. Yeah. And and did you did you warn them that this was going to happen, or were you just kind of like, should we go out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. What it's it's it, it, uh, funny enough. I mean, when I when I started, it was just you know I was a recovery worker in the NHS, and the rooms were so you know mm. you didn't even have a window. Mm. And for me, I mean, I've got ADHD, so you know I I mean like sitting down and I mean for just all the time is incredibly stressful, mm. you know. And um, and I I know I know she's touching my shoulder because she knows that I I'm also like that. <laughs> yeah, and I have to get out. And I have to pace. And I have to walk. Yeah. So so no, I mean I advertise it, and clients come to see me because they want that sort of alternative to sitting down having a mm. having therapy like this, and it makes it accessible. So if you kind of felt you know too intimidated to kind of sit in a room and have counselling like this, at least there's the option where you can you know walk. You don't have someone glaring at you, which as as I yeah. said can be really confrontational. And if you're highly anxious, it's not. It's not easy. It really isn't. Mm. So how did you? Well, this this like, literally just, was it just one day you thought let's just go out and do this somewhere else? How did how did it sort of a, a come to you to do this type of practice? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was a recovery worker and I started my counselling career, so I was seeing clients in the evening, and um, we had a lot of clients coming in. And as I said, it was window. You know, had a gurney there. You had a skeleton. You know, it was like you had a table, and it was just. It felt like being in a cell. You know, mm. and of course, you know, there's room shortages, so I understand. But um, what would happen is if people felt, you know, they couldn't have counselling in those spaces, um, a lot of the time, you know, they they didn't actually just attend. Um, and I was just sitting there one day, and I just thought, look, there's we're I'm in Queen Mary's Hospital. There's Richmond Park over the road. And I said, would you prefer to go, would you like to go out, go, go outside for a walk? And I got, got the, um, the kind of um, the place I was working to agree with it. Oh, so much better. Mm-hmm. It was so much better. I found it better. The whole kind of conversation loosened up. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, clients were instantly at ease. And also, you know, you don't have, when, when you've got gaps, when you've got spaces where no one's talking, it gets rid of all of those awkward pauses mm. as well, you know. And again, it was like, you know, when you're walking, your endorphins are going. And, you know, literally people that would sit there and, and felt very scared to speak. The minute they were walking, it was free flowing conversation. And it was just a completely different experience. I just thought, this is great. But uh, to be honest with you, I, I wanted to get outside as well, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? stuck in a room all day, like in, you know, with those, you know, the lights that you have was just yeah. like, oh, it's too much. I find it too much. Yeah. 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 Sometimes being parallel to someone instead of looking directly into their face as yeah. well, like, <laughs> like Joss is yeah. doing right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it yeah. feels more comfortable for some people, I think. I'm very aware that sometimes when I'm talking to people, I'm kind of not looking at them and I don't mean to do it, but it's more of like, a, I feel like I need to be in my head kind of cognitively working out what I'm saying and sometimes looking into someone's face can be really off-putting mm. um, in the nicest way possible. Do you work with a lot of people that have anxiety and stuff? I, all, all sorts of problems. Um, anxiety, um, of course, is a very, if you're stressed or depressed, anxiety is a very, very common one, yeah. Um, so, and of course, you know, walking therapy is perfect for that. And also for a lot of people who haven't, who've got out of the routine of walking, you know, part of the sessions is, this is something you can do whilst you're not having a session. So it's getting people back in, to being um, sort of reintroduced to walking because what I found was so many people in the city were um, literally had a park down the end of their road and they just never went there. You'd be Mm. surprised, like Mm. three years. When was the last time you went for a walk? Oh, well, I just don't, I don't have the time. It's like, man, you know, Mm. wow. Putting those barriers out. Yeah, Yeah, and, and and it got people back into walking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We were chatting in the car, weren't we, about the fact, you know, like people, 
people that live in cities, how it might be harder to get out into green spaces. But actually, I think I've read somewhere that London is one of the greenest cities in the world or something. It's, I mean, I think how I can't, I wrote in my book actually in terms of the amount of green spaces. It's it's huge, huge amounts of acreage, mm. you know. And, and one of the greatest things is that I'm always discovering someone new, mm. the amount of parks, you know, that I've gone to. And you just think this is absolutely incredible. You know, it's one wonderful part of my job that I love. Mm. Yeah. So it's not just the the nature aspect of it. It's the actual physical act of walking yeah. that can be helpful in these situations. I mean, walking is the most therapeutic thing, I think. We're designed to walk. This is the thing. Um, we're in a sit-down culture now. Teenagers from the age, I mean, the stat is from the age of 10 to 17, 10 to 17, they're sitting down for 75% of their lives. Wow. Because if you think you're at school, you're at school X yeah. amount of time a day, you know, and mm. then you come home and then people are either no on phones and you're sitting down. It's a huge sit down culture. I'm currently know. thinking about my eldest son. <laughs> really? And uh, thinking 75%, <laughs> yeah. that's probably... Quite low. That's it? quite low, yeah. <laughs> I think it's probably more like 95%. Yeah, soon enough um, you're going to yeah. have like a, st a stair lift that just carries him down for dinner. Well, it's going to be like that. It's like the... Um, it's going to be like Wally, you know, where they're all in that uh, space station and they're just on seats being moved around. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh but that's, so yeah, so that is a large amount of our time, isn't it? Spent doing that. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. And, and again, it's sort of when we walk. So the physical act of active walking, it decreases cortisol, the stress hormone. You know, so when we walk in nature, it creates in our brains oxytocin. So oxytocin is the bonding chemical, the love drug, they call it. And of course... You know, d d depending on the different times of day that you walk. I love twilight walks. I love twilight walks, you know. Mm. It just can't because you get huge amounts of oxytocin as the light's kind of dimming, yeah? Oh. And it decreases. All of that cortisol comes down, which is a massive instigator behind anxiety, you know. So when I had really bad anxiety as a kid, this is where I, my love for walking came in because I just started walking and I could walk for two to four hours a day. And it just temporarily got rid of that anxiety. Mm -hmm. You know, because if everyone knows who's had anxiety, um, it's that I used to love the first five minutes from waking up in the morning when I didn't have it. And then it started hitting and starting. I went, oh, not this again, you know. Mm -hmm. So at least practically doing something. And the great thing about walking is it's free. It is free, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if you could talk on anxiety a little bit and what is what's physically happening? Because I think most people know what anxiety is by now. And I want I wondered if you could speak on what physically is happening in our bodies when anxiety hits and how is walking good for that how does walking benefit that thing? i think i mean i think we're in a stress culture and i think cortisol is like an alarm i mean the thing sorry anxiety is like an alarm it's a survival mechanism it's we hate anxiety we want to get rid of it but it's trying to tell us something mm. you know and, and one of the most important things i think over over the course of years i think if you've had anxiety it just has antagonized the nervous system so much that it just goes into a state of habitual kind of like you know anxiety you know mm. um so cortisol the stress hormone is as i said is increased in the body um, and as I said, when you get out and you start walking and if you're surrounded by green, green leaves, sky, space, and actually if you're channeling out energy, I think a lot of anxiety is when we internalize a lot of anger, you know, and I think if you see anger as an energy, when you internalize it, that increases stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine if you released all your, all of the anger, all the frustration, outwardly what would actually happen to this room a few things will probably get broken mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah but when you can't do that and a lot of people are kind of you know um um either lose their voice you know with anxiety you know it, which is a horrible thing when you actually lose your voice you know you, you can't sort of say what it is that you want to say or you feel i shouldn't say it i can't say it mm. um and it all goes in and that frustration builds and the anxiety builds you know um so i think when we get out at least you can physically channel out you know, whatever energies we are internalizing, anger being a big one. And anger, a lot of people, we talk about anger management, but we don't actually kind of understand a lot about it. Yeah. Do you think that's more prevalent in men? Out of interest. I think it's in both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both men and women. Yeah, yeah. Because I, want, yeah, I wondered, <laughs> yeah, because there seems to be, well, anyway, I won't go into that. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Please I'm accused of it. I'm sitting in a room with two men, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I. so funnily enough, I actually... Um, I mean, I've had anxiety my pretty much my entire life since I was maybe. Quite, yeah, I think we could. I think this is a good group therapy session we've, yeah. we've instigated here because I've almost had that exactly. anxiety stuff. We're both well. very, very anxious, and um, and my whole life has been a massive struggle with trying to sort of overcome it, or at least, at least in some way, 
cope and manage with it. Mm. And it was literally only maybe two or three years ago that I realized the benefit of phys- physically walking when I felt anxious or even if I was in the middle of a panic attack. Yeah. Um, and so what I would do, and it was during lockdown actually, when we were literally only allowed to leave the house to go on walks and if I felt anxious I would go out for a walk and normally my anxiety would kick in at night and so because I live in the in the woods in the middle of nowhere I would go out for a walk um until I couldn't anymore because there were a few dodgy things like you know my friends started basically saying you need to stop doing this because you're going to get like mugged or or kidnapped or murdered or something and so I stopped doing it but that that was literally only a couple of years ago that I realized anytime I felt anxious, I would just go for a walk. And it was like, you know, the, the physical act. And I guess that comes down to physically when we are in a state of fight or flight, our body is created to run, like to run or to move because we're running away from a predator. So I guess actually it makes perfect sense, but it wasn't until recently that I kind of discovered that that helped. Mm. It's just, bizarre really when you think about it yeah yeah and and, th- and we're designed to move we are designed to move mm-hmm. you know but I, but, I, but the same I, I think it's great because it's just something tangibly you can do you know you don't feel helpless the thing about anxiety is you one can feel so amp- helpless and you do, don't know there's no kind of quick fix to it mm. but I think um, as I said you know if you do go for I mean people say just go for a half an hour walk for me I have to go longer mm-hmm. you know and we can make the time to do that and if you do do that you will benefit You're over if you do it regularly you will kind of I call I say there are things in life we can do that antagonize our nervous system you know and I was awful when I was a kid I was very shy I was very sensitive I went bright red I Mm. I was really embarrassed you know Um, I couldn't speak Mm. to girls you know I mean I was literally paralytically insecure Mm. and what happened is in my inner critic was awful it was oh what's wrong with you you know Mm. you know just uh, you know so the frustration at myself you think about all of that anger going in Mm. you know it's a lonely place to be so the thing about actually getting Getting outside, it almost kind of brings you outside of yourself as well. I never in nature, I no longer feel alone, you know. And the more that I did it, I had the connection with trees and the sky. And uh, I used to name the trees, and you know, mm-hmm. I told I told people a few people about this, and they thought he's going mad, isn't it? He's going, he's losing it, but it's like but, tree beard. <laughs> <laughs> but it does. After a while, it does feel like your family, you know. I mean, I've I've now still got that connection today, where it's my sanctuary, where I go, you know, and I, and. I don't feel alone, and um, and whatever whatever happens, you go for a walk, you come back. The anxiety is, if it's not completely gone, it's greatly lessened. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's there's a lot to be said about like anxiety and how you know really um, it's an it, our brains have not evolved necessarily since those times. You know, when we we were running away from a, a predator, mm. but now obviously it's changed. We're we're now finding anxieties within that you know whether it could be a workplace thing or uh, a relationship or social media for example have you seen that there's been an increase in kind of cases of anxiety and stuff because of the prevalence of like an online world it's the worst it's ever been for teenagers at the minute i think even though the pandemic's gone i think it hasn't gone i think there's a huge amount of after effects for a lot of people about that, you know, and again, lots of different things happening in the world. A lot of people are very hyper vigilant, you know, and again, with a lot of teenagers, you know, you can imagine what that's like for them. And all of a sudden, like, well, you know, the feeling of hopelessness has actually increased as well, you know. So, and, and again, I just think the, the the kind of the sitting down and being online, we're in such a trend with it now, you know. And again, I, I remember when people used to wake up in the morning, get on the underground, get straight on their phones. I mean, it's, it's like that. And looking at screen time, you know, you get um, overstimulated. Mm. You're getting retinal overstimulation, you know. And again, if you're kind of got ADHD, I get overstimulated <laughs> so easily. I mean, if I'm cooking in the kitchen and one of my kids is coming around, I'm like, let me alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Too so many I, inputs. Oh, and then honestly, I mean, I have them a few days a week. And then when they go, I, I have that immediate, like, I need to do so. I need, I need to kind of yeah. bring it down, you know. So, yeah. but no, there is a, I, I'm, I'm sort of very greatly concerned about, the raise the the, the 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 rise in suicides at the minute mm. um and again there's a lot of things i think there's a lot of things emotions that people aren't voicing and so again i think you know that thing about getting out with a getting out for a walk i realize even in the city of london i can't try, try and promote to companies walking meetings 
And it's incredible where people just open up about their lives, mm. you know, rather than sitting in an office. Mm. And again, it's that kind of, you get outside, you take that action. It's all about taking action outside. It's almost like you bring this other part of yourself outside as well. Mm. Oh, walking yeah. meetings is such a good idea. I think mm. it would make people look forward to the meeting as well, because at the moment, everyone's like, uh, especially since the pandemic. <laughs> They're so. like, what? Uh. <laughs> Especially since the pandemic, when you you know everything's now done via Zoom or remotely, anything where you have to go into the office, I feel well certainly from what I've heard my friends, it's like well, there's no point. We don't need to anymore. We can stay in our pajamas at home. It's fine. <laughs> and then, you know now yeah. I think encouraging people to go go outside into nature, I think we definitely in, improve people's mental health and get rid of a bit of the Sunday blues. I think the biggest problem is people don't prioritise it. And I, I hear all the time, well, I can't, I mm. can't, I don't have the time. It's like, well, there you go. You've just designed your life. Mm. You've now created a design for your life not to go outside. Well done. Mm. Yeah, Crack on with it. And, not, and literally, you know, if you want to change things, you can actually. I was trying to promote four days week, four day weeks, you know, before the pandemic. Mm. The difference that makes oh. is incredible. Yeah. You know, no one should work a five day week. It's just not practical. Well, we've seen already you know? the benefits of actually remote working, like yeah. not having to go into an, mm. uh, an office space and how actually you can be more productive mm. um, working from home, not necessarily doing as many hours n necessarily. You know, whereas, you know, like you're saying, if why not have a four day week where we can actually have a three day weekend where we can actually <laughs> connect with people and nature it's the biggest myth in this country the longer hours i work mm. the more productive i am i mean some meetings oh. that go on for an hour if you give a meeting for an hour you're going to have a meeting for an hour yeah. and allow people just to talk incessantly about you know what they could probably say concisely in about 20 minutes so if you just it's all about creating boundaries and creating boundaries for ourselves but we need to put ourselves at the top of the list and it's it's quite stunning i will hear more and more excuses as to why i can't go for a walk why yeah i can go for a walk yes it kind of helps but when you actually do it mm. and people who take more regular breaks in their day as you said it's like the pomodoro te the technique isn't it you know which is like you have to what is it you kind of revise for 20 minutes and then you're off for kind of 10 minutes yeah. and you revise for 10 and the absorption rate, you absorb so much more because you're mm. not in, in that kind of, because um, you, you know when you're stressed, you can be looking at your screen for about two hours and get nothing done. Mm. And one of the other biggest things is about when you're actually inside an office is the tap, 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 what? Tap, tap, yeah. tap, what? Oh, yeah. You know, and then you've got to get your concentration back in. And I, the thing about offices, I mean, it's, oh, I don't know. It's, it, again, I don't think, I think we need to, we need to seriously, I think with the education system, with, with the way society is working right now, it needs to all be completely rethought mm. for what's to improve people's mental health. It's yeah. just not conducive. Yeah, yeah, I found this with with becoming self-employed after having worked in a normal working environment. The amount of guilt that I residual guilt that I still have from taking breaks or ha giving myself days off. You know, I could easily work seven days a week, 20, you know, 12 hours a day and feel guilty if I give myself a couple of hours to go on a walk. And that I think that that has leaked in from previous working experiences where I felt like I constantly have to be you know, stressed and yeah. overworked to get anything done but actually the days where I chill out and I take time off and I you know go go out and into nature and it's you kind of uh broaden your eyesight even like you know if you're staring at a screen all day or a painting or a piece of work or whatever it is and then you go out into nature and your eyes are suddenly focusing on things all around you and out at a distance and it, it, I think it prevents that tunnel vision that you can get where you actually end up not really doing very much you just well, I'm burnout yeah 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 and the thing is people uh, uh, people don't really know what burnout is and burnout's adrenal fatigue it's when we burn out our adre adrenaline glands mm. do you know what I mean so it's like when we where you go you go you go you go and then there's nothing and adrenaline's a painkiller as well so again, it's like to create motivation, we kind of create adrenaline, that creates motivation, you know, so you can imagine I need to get up, I'm tired, more adrenaline, more adrenaline, more mm. adrenaline, you know, we are adrenaline ad addicts in this society, we really are, get a coffee, get on a screen, mm. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. So the adrenaline burns out and, and then you're left with that horrible feeling that you have in burnout, the hopelessness, the kind of... And as exactly you said, Sophie, you know, when you get cortisol really high, you go into that tunnel vision and you lose sight of every single thing on the periphery. 
Mm. Whether it be friends, family, what you know, you forget to actually reach out and ask for help, which you're so good at, Giles, like on, on your Twitter. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Reminding people to ask for help. I have to say, even as a therapist, I'm the worst at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so honestly I think men. Yeah. I, I hate to bring it around to me about that. Absolutely. But I yeah. think as a woman... You couldn't let it lie. I know. The whole time I was like, how can yeah. I make this about hating men? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> no, but as women, I feel like we're very good at constantly, like, you know, chat, 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 chat. My friends yeah. know all of my problems all the time. <laughs> That's great. Don't That's pretty good. Them. But, and Giles, to be fair, you're very, very good at that as well, I think, about communicating when you're not feeling great or when something's going on. But as as a collective, I think men can struggle with that and I was going to ask is that is that is walking therapy great for a particular gender you know have you found that it's quite quite good for men because I know that men yeah. also find it difficult to talk to each other about stuff great for men great for teenagers you know again a teenager sitting like this it's like you know it's mm. it's <laughs> you know but there's yeah. a, a there's apparently I mean I've you know I, I, I'm a man I, I can I you know I can talk from a man's perspective um <laughs> but apparently there's something in a man that if you look like that Looking at you, Giles. There's something okay. very confrontational. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, we're I like, thought you're going to punch me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so apparently that eye-to-eye -eye contact yeah. is there's something a bit more confrontational about it. Mm. Um, so when you get outside, of course, you don't you don't actually have that. You know, mm. yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I yeah. Re I read somewhere that men talk to each other parallel anyway. Like if they're at a, that's why they like sitting at bars next to each other rather than at, across at each other at a table. I don't know if that's true. I don't know the that's biggest thing, the science. biggest thing with, with men is pride. You know, the thing that st prevents men from talking about the feelings is pride and shame. You know, so if you let it out of the box, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I was that vulnerable with someone. But it's like anything, the more you, it, I think it's important that you need to choose your audience. You know, I'm, I'm very, I mean, I actually very sadly lost my best friend of 27 years, five months ago, who oh. suddenly oh, died. So sorry, man. Yeah. yeah. And it feels like, I mean, I've lost several people in my life. And so I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm used to going through, I'm no stranger to grief, but it felt like, and feels like now part of me has been amputated, yeah. you know. Mm. And he was a he was someone you know we would we would just talk about we talk about cooking or you know kind of pasta or you know Mandalorian or whatever. Mm. And I think it's great with teenagers as well. When I'm when I'm when I'm talking to teenagers, we're just talking about everyday stuff, and then it kind of weaves its way in. It's nice yeah. when you then weaves its way in to then start talking about something that might be quite pert, what might be going on with someone. Mm. They might just start opening up. They have that confidence. And so I think if you're going to talk about your feelings, I think you have to choose the right audience. I used to go to the people that would never listen to me. I literally went out of my way subconsciously to choose people oh. who would not see me and would not hear me. So I always felt unseen and unheard. And do, yeah. was that, So it was like I almost set myself up. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, is that sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy? Yeah. It's because you felt like that within and it's almost like you're seeking that out to reaffirm that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had such a low self uh, sense of worth that it validated that low sense of worth for me. Interesting. So yeah. that's a good takeaway for the listeners to make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people that hold space for you and, and are the right sort of people to talk to. How yeah. would you go about f knowing that or finding that? I just think, I mean, I, I, I've got my go-to people for certain things, and quite literally. I'm like, I won't go to that person for that because then they're going to talk about that and I don't really want to talk about <laughs> that. You know, I want to be really selfish and I want to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah, So um, that's how Giles <laughs> feels about me. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so not. I'm not going to start a conversation with Sophie about that because you just turn that's it around to be about ghosts or something. <laughs> anyway, sorry, it's Karen. just not true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, so yeah. we, we've got our go-to people. Um, I've got my go-to people. Yeah, so I think it is important to kind of select. Um, I, I think for me, a, a lot of people talk about, we don't need a lot. I, I don't have lots and lots of friends. I probably have about two or three people I feel very comfortable talking with, you know, um, openly. But again, it's kind of like, I think we've got to also be very kind of conscious, conscientious about, you know, I think we should never spread ourselves, you know, too narrowly, you know, as well. So, I mean, I, I like just striking up conversation with everyone on the street. You know what I mean? Mm. And sometimes I like put myself down and like actually sort of, you know, just, you know, randomly talking to strangers and, you know. There's an amazing comfort in strangers, I have yeah. to say. And I, obviously, yeah. like, you know, we've, we've talked about social media a little bit, but actually finding people online sometimes, you know, you meet common, you know, have common things and put common kindred spirits, all that kind of stuff. 
And actually, yeah, you do can sometimes you can feel comfortable confiding in those people. Why is that? It's amazing, isn't it? Because they will just tell you one or two things that will change your day mm. completely. You know, I remember when I went to a charity shop and um, I wasn't having a good day. And this one said, oh, she went, oh, thank you. She said, I said, oh, yeah, thanks. She went, oh, thank you so much. And then she just went into this, like, you know, was talking about stuff and what mm. was going on. And it was, <laughs> and I was just completely lost. Didn't think about my problems anymore. I was completely zoned into her. And I walked away with, again, this amazing experience that she was discussing at the time and you the thing about identification I mean we're animals you know some animals live, you live on their own I'm, we're, we're not just being on your own or feeling on your own is the worst thing possibly for possible for our mental health mm. it's good to kind of go I'm someone that I can be on my own I love my own company absolutely love mm. it but then equally I need to be around people and I think when you're feeling very isolated on your mental health you know the opening up and talking to strangers as you said it because you can walk away yeah <laughs> yeah you're never going to yeah. see them again Good point. yeah 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 but actually you don't know like that lady could, that that active listening that you gave her yeah. could have actually made such a difference to you know what she was going through or you know and and actually then that also perversely had a had an effect on you as well well they can give you those gems those mm. amazing gems where you think wow i love surprises like that mm. you know where someone will just change your whole day or change your week or just you know just being kind i think yeah. people you're incredibly kind giles you know what i mean you put out a genuinely loving message out there mm. and, and and both of you you know in yeah, terms of what you, you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but of I'll course but, <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> but of course you know with 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 yeah. your, your, the paintings and stuff that you do i mean honestly if i'm having a bad week it kind of there's something that lightens it mm. you know in terms of but being kind se sending up a really kind of warm and positive mm -hmm. message yeah. and again like the animals that you kind of paint it that for me even looking at those it takes me back to nature mm. you know it takes oh, me out good. of this kind of world and te transports me into yeah. another one yeah i mean we'll say with social media it's so easy to get sucked into the negative loop of you know judgment and starting arguments and again you know in, t in the same way as talking to a stranger can be easier because there's almost that sense of anonymity it's the same with, on the other hand, the same with social media. It's easier to kind of be kind of nasty and judgmental when you feel anonymous and you're sitting behind a keyboard. And I'm thinking in terms of sort of like biologically and anthropologically, I, I would imagine that quite a lot of these mental health concerns come from the fact that we are tribal creatures. And mm. so it's either a feeling of being alone or rejected or abandoned or ostracized or one of those things and so connecting with people and talking and going for walks in nature and feel feeling connected with nature and connected with someone else mm. that you're talking to could be the perfect remedy for that well you know with families you know if you're having an argument there's something about you know even in relationships you know when you're indoor the home it gives you license just to scream and mm. get into arguments whatever the minute you go outside and again i think it, especially with families family discussions it completely changes the dynamic uh, for families to talk openly and honestly and it's you know family walks i used to love family walks you know because you just drop back and then you speak to your brother you move forward you speak to your mum then you move to your dad and you know mm. it was really really nice you know that kind yeah. of that change around and you, you have a proper chance to kind of to catch up but we we are not the way the way the mental health is bad at the minute because the way we live our lives is absolutely appalling right now mm. and it just have to change and in my book that i wrote um of course you know my shadow animal is the wolf that's my shadow animal you still haven't painted a wolf yet i'm still waiting no, for no i was considering it in my next collection actually cool. but you, it's funny how many people say you should paint a wolf and i wonder if it is because people feel connected with wolves in some way yeah it's a weird one isn't it i mean i've always i've always i had it in sort of dreams that i might because i'll sound absolutely oh, cr i will yeah. sound you know like off my head but <laughs> i did i used to and, uh, i used spirit, to have dreams of running through animal. long yeah like long trees and then later i found out you know looked into a and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um but yeah the 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 thing is like it was interesting writing because when you find when you found out as well it was um you know if if an animal is caged it starts losing its fur mm -hmm. so even an animal being trapped will lose its sheen in its eyes it will go into depression you know mm -hmm. and why should it be any different to us you know the mm -hmm. biggest thing at the minute is we trap ourselves you know and again i think it's on, as an onlooker to watching people with screens it's like that it's like that yeah that is a very, your world becomes so narrow, mm. you know? And it's, I mean, I'm I'm now 47. And I, I mean, I just, I was thinking about the, the other day of when I was running around, I got a pager 
and the page of buzz. Oh god, I had. Do you one remember of those. that? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, it's yeah. you know, and it's a weird thing. <laughs> and then you look it up, and it goes, "Please call." Yeah, and it went. Yeah, yeah that was that. the thing. It would always <laughs> yeah. please call me. Yeah. Yeah. Think, oh, I've got this device to to go and use another device. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. like running around. Going, I need change. Yeah, I need change. You yeah, know? <laughs> you know. And it was like, like again, if you had to meet someone, you know, and they didn't turn up, you couldn't just pick yeah. up a phone and sort of, you know. But I was thinking about the amount of time, you know. That we would just we not I mean online just didn't exist apart mm. from if I played like Ghosts and Goblins on my like Commodore sixty four you know what I mean but mm. the screen time now I mean the increase is it it is it's shocking it's scary isn't it it really is you know and it, yeah. and we don't have that connection with each other anymore and you know if you're stuck to a screen like that yeah you're in your room it's isolated and being trapped so I think we have to look at how we isolate ourselves the things that we do to isolate ourselves but the most important thing is how do we untrap ourselves mm. yeah well I'm thinking about pets and how you know when, if we get a dog it's a given that you have to walk it it's not even like a should I or should I not you buy a dog and you walk it every single day, twice a day or whatever, you have a cat and you let it out. Like at no point does it enter our thoughts like let's let's not walk the dog. Let's just stick it in front of the TV and that's the same thing, right? Mm. You know, we never consider that with animals, but why do we f- treat ourselves any differently? Mm. Yeah, and I think we have to, we have to think of ourselves as animals, you know. What animal would you guys be if you had a shadow animal? Monkey. You, really? Mm, for sure. <laughs> I've got that was so it. quick. I had no chance to think. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> giraffe, maybe. You'd be something super like I don't know. Actually, you'd be something that um, sometimes is very be careful. Loving, what you say kind and then calm, and sometimes just goes r- really hyper. Maybe a dog, actually, really loyal, but then gets the zoomies and runs around. Yeah, what kind of dog though? <laughs> uh, oh, a nice one. Like I don't know, a, a golden retriever or something. I can see that. Yeah. Okay. I I'll, can see I'll that. take that. Take no that. dog's bad dog, Sabi. I mean, no, no, but you know, you know. I don't want to be a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are quite yappy. <laughs> what is it? What is it about the monkey? Um, do you know what? It's since childhood, I've been, I was obsessed with cats Please. and monkeys. <laughs> what did you say? Please. <laughs> Flea. Oh, no, I do actually. I love grooming behavior. I find that really fascinating. But I do, I love doing that. Like if someone's got a scab or a spot or something, I'm like, oh, can I pick it? Can I get it? <laughs> and um, which I've yeah. recently you're found cr- out. You're grim, mate. <laughs> no, I, yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Uh, but I recently found, because someone called me out on that recently, <laughs> and I found out that actually um, the grooming behavior fires off some kind of reaction in our brain which makes us feel closer to people and it kind of sparks some of the like love hormones and stuff which makes us feel closer to people so i don't know but i i vividly remember going to the zoo as a kid and well like monkey world or whatever it was and um the monkeys were sort of staring at me and and then you're one of their own yeah (laughs) and they were there was these little monkeys that were in a a little Hut. I guess it looked like a bit like a bird box, but for mon- little monkeys, and they were like pushing each other out of the way to get a look at me. Um, my brother was sort of, like laughing. People were, were gathering around watching them do this, and my brother was like, "They think that you're one of them." And I was like, "I think I'm one of them too." <laughs> like, I just like them. They're like humans, but stripped back. No ego. No ish. You know, no nonsense. Just primitive and simple and fun. Yeah, it was so for my daughter the other day. She said, I love all animals except monkeys. Oh. <laughs> I know. She, she's got, <laughs> she'll come round, you know what I mean? Weird. I, I, I think, I think, I, I mean, I love monkeys. So I, I really do. I don't know what it was. I think it was because, um, I think it was because she had an experience where one was just like uh, kind of going a bit, bit, oh, was going yeah. like a bit, bit too much, yeah. you know, like in the zoo and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, but it's true, isn't it? Because again, you know, I look at my kids and they're like monkeys, aren't they? You know, they are, yeah, yeah. Mm. When they're that age, they're seven and five. My two daughters. Oh yeah, the climbing around, the need to climb, cheeky, it's, yeah. And the yeah. thing is, when when does it actually stop? This is the thing, you know. With adults, we sort of there's something that I, I don't want to call every every adult and 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 arrogant or egotistical, but. There is that point where ego gets in the way. I should be doing this. I can't do that. And we stop having fun. Mm. Yeah. We stop, stop playing. Do you know what? I mean, uh, apart from the fact that, you know, I mean, <laughs> you, we, we, I don't know. The way that I was brought up, you know, 
it was like, you know, go out during the day, you know, don't get hit by a car, don't talk to strangers yeah, and come yeah. back when it's dark. And yeah. I remember the level of exploring that I used to do. I mm. used to love it. You know, the places that you just end up and go and that need for expl- exploration and adventure. Yeah. We just, we just don't, we don't live, we, as he said, like, you know, as an animals, we need... Mm. We need to be inspired. We need to go out there. We need to kind of just have constant contact with different things, different people. Mm. And then we wonder why we've got mental health issues, you know, because it's yeah. essentially, essentially it's like, we, so that's why I think it's really useful to say, what is your animal? And if I look at the wolves, you know, in terms of how they are, it's very similar to my character traits as well, because they're actually incredibly sensitive. They're not just predatorial, you know. Mm. Um, they kind of watch. They work. They work as a pack. Absolutely, they work on their own. You know, mm. they have a huge effect upon nature as well. Um, and it's like, and again, I mean, funny enough, dogs don't like me. Actually, dogs growl at me. So it's like, you know, I had a dog that was like, you know, really old, and it's only was shot because it just used its entire energy for the day <laughs> and just went, Rah! you know. And she was like, it's never done that before. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm yeah. honoured, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> you know, my so. dog did that the other day, an, an older old man that was frail and like could barely walk. And and uh, she's very old as well. And and kind of, <laughs> it's funny, she was barking and barking. And like every time she tried to take a breath in because she's so old, she was going. <laughs> it was kind of like the, the old guy from The Simpsons like in dog form. And uh, yeah, I was kind of looking at her like, wow. Oh, I didn't know you had that kind really of didn't like that guy. Yeah, it was, like, well, it was instinctual. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? And it's like, um, I was watching that, the, the, the thing that you did, Sophie, like, it's, I mean, I'm so jealous, actually. It was at North Pole that you went to. Was it North Pole? Yeah, Pole? Uh, the Arctic. Yeah, so the I, Arctic. I went up to, we ended up going up to the pack ice, probably about 93 degrees north. Wow. So, yeah, not quite the North Pole, but close, close enough. And there was a sense of, and this is another thing I get from walking in nature and, you know, the sense of peace, mm. you know. Yeah. I've got my I've got my areas that I go to. I think everybody needs to choose their sanctuary, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I love walking. I know my go-to places that I'll go. Richmond Park I, I go to because I love, when you just look out, it's like there's nothing in your way. It's not like Wimbledon mm. Common, which mm. is very kind of, it does a completely different thing. Yeah. Because you're going in the trees you'd mm. love it like it's definitely yeah. monkey 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 <laughs> monkey land isn't it so it's like yeah. but but you've got you know you've got because i missed you know i went for a walk recently where the trees come over you you know mm-hmm. and you see the light coming through the trees oh my god and the effect that that has i can just feel mm. magic happening mm. literally there's something so magical you know just about watching that stream of light come through and it's like yeah. we are so lucky nature is such an amazing thing you yeah. know and the people are so scared of the word spiritual. They really are. And, and you know, and I said, well, it's spirit to spirit, isn't it? It's that mm-hmm. whether it, it's just connection with something else. And, you know, yeah, I, I remember there's this one place in Woman of Comet and the streams of light just come from absolutely everywhere. And it just lights up, you know, the sort of the forest floor and, you know, the, the odd log here and there. Mm-hmm. But it's like you just sit there and you just feel so connected to everything. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. I think you're only... In my opinion, you're only kind of open to that, though. There'd be plenty of people that would walk through the same place as you and they w- wouldn't even notice most of what you're noticing. And I feel like there there comes a point when you're running off of survival mode, essentially. It's like a vicious cycle, really, isn't it? And as adults, and it goes back to what you were saying about the ego and, and how as adults we sort of move away from our childhood exploration days and into sort of like ego and like what do I have to do what do I have to say how do I have to think and, and it's all about fitting into the tribe and not deviating from that and so we move into this sort of survival mode and then the more in that survival mode you are ingrained the less you're able to sort of break through break free and go into the sort of space that you're you know talking about which is that's more spiritual sort of open you know enjoying nature nature feeling the connection with nature and other people and stuff like that so do you have any advice for something that's in that cycle of survival and stress stress work works screen time yeah you've got to put everything down and you need to make that decision and the only person that can do that is you mm. you know for me I, I mean words are words you know they, they, they they're great to hear but actions speak louder than words it's a great old saying isn't it and mm. it's completely true mm. and I'll have people saying well nothing's changing nothing's changing well what have you done to change it you haven't mm. actually done you haven't actually actioned anything you know so I think sometimes you have to do the opposite of what it is that you want to do and literally kind of move yourself out of your comfort zone I think there's two things I think you can move yourself too far out of your comfort zone you've got to find the right balance so I'd say <clears throat> to anyone just get out for like like let's say just get out for 20 minutes in a day 
and then then 30 minutes then 40 minutes you know mm. and uh, because as you said with social media i think it's it's completely unhealthy we're in a we're in a comparing culture everybody is comparing themselves to someone else mm. you know this kind of they're kind of wealthy they're successful you know and, and it's all about it's all about this this we lose ourselves you know amongst all of that you know yeah so i think you know everybody needs a sanctuary and everybody needs to go out to a place and sit with themselves and be and the more that you do that you become more comfortable you know with your feelings you get more comfortable with mm. being in your own self we have a thing called an interdependent relationship the relationship we have with us the way that we talk to ourselves i often say like if a people if someone's got a really critical inner narrative i'd say would you speak to your child or would you speak to your friend the way that you talk to yourself? Mm. The answer was like, no. I said, well, why are you talking to yourself that way? Yeah. So there's something about when we go out into nature, it softens that narrative, you know? And again, it's this whole thing we need to like, because I pace and you can tell I'm quite, I'm quite speedy. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I need, I need mm. to calm my stimulation levels down. And that's why for me, my twilight as a time of day I choose as my time of day to go for a walk you know it because it's like the day I come down with the day mm. and that you know it's, if you're a photographer you'll notice there's what's it called I think in oh, twilight yeah. twilight's a magical time mm. and it captures something very very different there's like a magical I think it's about a 40 minute period yeah, where the, you take gold, a the golden hour the golden hour yeah, yeah amazing mm. and so again your oxytocin it really does come down so if you're in that survival mode, I think it's like you've got something where it, it's just high levels of cortisol, high levels of stress that creates the fight, flight or freeze mechanism. You walk, get, channel out energy, channel out anger, whatever, whatever. I think sometimes rather than getting into what the feeling is, think about it as energy. Hmm. You know, feel that energy and, and figure out what go on a got a really brisk walk. Or sometimes go on a very kind of gentle walk, you know, just just play around with the tempos, you know, play around with different locations. Every location does something completely different for you. In grief, I love sitting and I love looking at water. Mm -hmm. And with when I'm with clients that are basically going through grief, you know, and because I have been goofed through grief, you don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. You're in such a state of shock, you know, but you just want someone to literally sit beside you. You yeah. just don't want to be on your own. And I have to say, there's something, I, in Wimbledon Park later, Lake, um, whenever I've gone through anything, I've just sat there, I've looked at the water. I don't know what it is about water. But for grief, it's an unbelievably healing mm. part of nature. Can I you just know? clarify as well for others and for me? Yeah. Because I often go, for, I mean, I go for a walk every day, obviously, and have a dog and stuff. But I will always take my headphones and be listening to something, podcasts, music, do we is it important to have that s quietness in your mind do you, you know do you encourage people to take the headphones off and just be outside it's a really good question actually again when i did the book it was like they when you're writing it they said in the exercise because i put exercises at the, at the end of each chapter and um i and i am trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to endorse the book here but, <laughs> but oh, we'll put it in the show notes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it will be in the show notes but 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 again it was um but you know when you it was a good thing i think sometimes i think sometimes it's good for me i have to be honest with you i think listening to kind of the wind listening to your feet kind of touch the ground like with the pebbles i think it's really important to kind of regulate yourself mm -hmm. and start listening to to, to things around you mm. yeah so i think taking the headphones out is a really important part because otherwise you're you're getting uh auditory stimulation yeah <laughs> so retinal and auditory st overstimulation are the two stimulations we need to bring down mm. and both of those things will create adrenaline um uh, in in your body interesting yeah, yeah. I, I definitely get the the auditory stimulation overstimulation for sure because i have music playing 24 7 and podcasts and stuff and then yeah well, we don't talk about adrenaline addiction, do we? we do, if you say adrenaline addiction, and I, I think that feeds into drama addiction as well, yeah. you know, because mm, people stress, create adrenaline. drama to kind of get that sense of adrenaline. Mm, it's mm. that yeah. drug. I need my drug. You know, yeah. I need that thing. It's adrenaline, you know. Mm. I need to come home from a hard day's work and watch EastEnders, yeah. you know. It's like, well, well we, were, we were talking about how the people that do sit on social media and like trolls and stuff, we were sort of trying to unpick why people do that and saying there must be some kind of adrenaline. Well, yeah, I mean, it's equally like you get dopamine from nice things. Things, but you get dopamine from like drama and stuff as well. Like you know, you can. That's a it's a, it's a you know an adrenaline. Um, it's a it's a much more insidious, horrible kind of effect. But you still get the same buzz. Yeah, it's true. 
It is true. I never thought about that. It's really interesting. Mm. You know? it, well, it's two sides of the same coin in the same way that sort of t- sometimes it's difficult to interpret whether you're feeling anxious or excited. Sometimes it can be excitement and anger. And, mm. and you know, f- I, I've noticed that if there are any conflicts in my life, whether that be online or in with friends and family, it has a f- real physiological effect on me. Like my heart will race. I'll feel anxious and shaky and like you know all the rest of it it has a physical effect on you and i can imagine that that is actually quite addictive as well what well, but adrenaline's a painkiller it's a way of numbing your feelings you know mm. and, and it's true you won't feel your feelings and that's why when we get burnout there's no adrenaline all the emotions come up yeah so all yeah. those feelings we try and run away from you can't outrun feelings mm. they'll, they'll catch you up you know yeah yeah so it's always when you have burnout you have this huge it comes out in dreams you know mm. you, have, you have stress dreams because all the adrenaline's there isn't it? and it's no longer it needs it isn't, it isn't numbing it anymore, and I think when we talk about adrenaline addiction, everybody thinks about adrenaline junkies. And it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> jumping like, off, no. jumping off cliffs. It's like no, no. It's, it's you know, and again, I think it's like when people look at talk about addiction, everyone's got an addiction of some kind. You know, <laughs> we're we're, mm. we're habitual creatures, and I think you know you can change one addiction for another addiction. My addiction became walking. You know, mm. um, so I think it's important. You know that, and I, I think it's it's good to be addicted. It's good to be addicted, but addicted to good things. You know, yeah, mm. oh, and. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we need, and if you've got a taste of actually just calming down, rather, I mean, I could never go back now and sort of, I live in the Isle of Wight now and I love coming back to London, you know, but wow, after three days, I'm ready to go back, Mm, you know, because it's, it's, for me, it's the sounds. I notice the sounds. Mm. I mean, the thing is, I've nearly got killed by cars. <clears throat> every time because I've forgotten how to cross roads <laughs> you know because you know there's no cars yeah. and you cross the road and you just drift off you know yeah. and I, I have to be a lot more hyper vigilant I've mm. noticed you know yeah. when I'm back over and I love London to actually bits it'll always be it'll always be like a favourite place of mine but but I do feel like when I when I come here I'm walking X amount X I'm walking at much slower speed mm. by the time I'm, I'm walking with everyone else mm. I'm walking as quick as they're walking you know yeah yeah, I guess it's kind of whatever sort of becomes your emotional home almost. So if if you get into the cycle of constantly being stressed or angry or anxious, that becomes your baseline. And so if you deviate that from that from that in a positive or a negative way, you almost subconsciously try to get back up to that baseline. And so it, I guess it it's important to take stock of where you are um, emotionally and physically and, and say, actually, do I live in a constant state of stress? And just taking a minute to be quiet with yourself and work out, it, am I stressed or, or am I not stressed or is this just normal? It's a really good point. And the thing is about walking when you're actually out there, you can actually actually start, how am I feeling? That opens that question, how am I feeling? Mm. Yeah, Because yeah. a lot of people don't know how they're feeling. They'll go through their lives. I've had people come to me at 40 years old, they didn't even know that the feeling that what they were feeling was anxiety. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. They're not able to name the feeling. Naming the feeling is an incredibly difficult thing to do if you're not used to naming the feeling. And mm. when you get out to nature, you have that space to kind of actually go, how am I feeling? It's amazing. Yes, have you ever had that sometimes you can be hit with a bit of sadness or or you know and again I I, I, for me it's you know I've gone through moments where I've been really stuck creatively and I hate that you know Mm -hmm. when you're just like oh my Mm -hmm. god you know you know so again there's kind of that frustration but yeah it's a really really good point I think you know a lot a lot of people will stop in their lives to ask themselves how they're feeling. Mm. And also, and but they'll expect there's a frustration where they'll actually want someone else to kind of like, you know, guess how you're feeling. Mm. So, well, if you don't tell me, yeah. you know, yeah. how am I meant to know? We do that, I think, in relationships and friendships where we get so focused on what other people are doing. And, you know, it might be Giles has done something and I'm like, oh, Giles, you've done this instead of communicating actually how you're feeling and, and not necessarily emotionally, but you, it might be, oh, my heart's really racing or like, oh, I'm feeling really like pent up or, oh, I feel really frustrated because of that, you know, and then actually it's t- t- turning in, into a mirror sort of situation and you turn it around t- to be about how you're feeling and why. And so we, yeah, we kind of put everything on other people, don't we often? Yeah, it's true. And I think a lot of people can project and I think, a lot, I don't like it when people don't take accountability for what's going on them and they will just, they will mm. just project what's going on for themselves onto someone else. Mm. And also I think there's nothing worse than second guessing. <laughs> Mm. You know, it's like, well, how are you feeling? It's like, no, are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, ta- you know. that's the classic. <laughs> yeah. La classic. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's been fantastic, Jonathan. It's been so lovely to talk to you. I just wanted to ask one question. Sure. Um, finally, about um, when you go out and walks and stuff, if seasons, different seasons make a difference to that, to, to the treatment, or, 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 or do you have to, you know, adjust what you do around seasons, or is it just a doesn't matter whatever the season will will go i there's no such thing as bad weather every season brings something completely different i love cold weather walks you know i love it because again you're getting a huge amounts of endorphin huge amounts of dopamine by the sheer cold coldness of it all um you know i think it's not just seasons it's times of days it's the kind of the pace that we walk i th- i like i i think it's important that people should actually go out and find, make their own kind of recipe you know, what works for me? And the thing, and people say, well, how do you know if it works? Because you'll feel it in your body. And sometimes it's like this, we, we, you know, our body will react. Our body will let us know what it actually really, really likes, you know. Mm-hmm. So for instance, actually in the summer, if I go for a walk during the day, I don't like it. It stresses me out. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm not a sun. Well, I like a bit of sun, mm-hmm. but if you're walking all day, you're like, it's actually quite stressful if you're overheating, you know, so... But I love walking in the shade. I love walking through trees and getting that breeze in the summer, you know. So I think every season and different times of day brings different things. So I think everybody should just, I think it's about one thing, create a boundary in your day, get outside, stop making excuses that you can't do it. You can do it. Prioritise yourself. Don't blame anyone else, you know, for not creating the time that you need to create. Mm. Um, And I think, you know, even if it's bad weather, get an umbrella, get a coat on, get outside, you know. I can speak for everybody that doesn't like walking when it's cold and miserable outside. And all I can say is sometimes things feel better to have done than they do to do. (laughs) So sometimes it feels better to go, you know, to have been out for a walk in the rain and, you know, the cold than it actually feels good to think about doing it. Do you know when my daughters, when they were young, you know, they they never wore a hood and they go, I love having a shower, daddy. (laughs) They love that that thing of the rain hitting your face. Mm. And I love that coming back from a walk, absolutely drenched, you know. Actually, one time I I came back actually with that coat, which is the worst, (laughs) because it just, you got puddles of water. (laughs) And I had my own phone just in a puddle of water going, no! Do you know, but I love that feeling when you come back and you're just absolutely soaked, you're drenched, Mm. but you're kind of, you're alive, that feeling of alive I'm alive you know yeah yeah endorphin dopamine city it's amazing yeah yeah I guess well kids again looking at sort of how we do things as kids is more intuitive and I'm thinking back now I'm like when I was a kid I used to run around in shorts and t-shirt in all weathers all times of year I'd be out there in the middle of winter making a den building a den climbing trees running around outside now I've become a little bit I don't know Fair uh, weather. Fair weather. Yeah, <laughs> love, well, I, I love feel that word. A little bit like a princess <laughs> who <laughs> refuses to have anything less than the perfect temperature condition, <laughs> which is weird considering I did go to the Arctic. But yeah, I got, I, I got a question mm. uh, actually for you, Giles, if that's all right as yeah. well. You know, so yeah, okay. <laughs> turn the tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as a parent, do you? I mean, talking as a parent as mm. well, uh, in terms of, do you think? Parents need to have more responsibility to say to kids, no, you're off the screen now. And actually kind of say, you are coming out for a walk, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I'm And like gonna... literally drag them out. Because I mean, again, it was like, it, it, beca- it was part of our day. It was, it was part of our Sunday going for family walks, you know. And I, I think, isn't it, the pa- isn't it don't, don't parents have that responsibility to kind of put that boundary down for a kid? Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I get, yes, absolutely. And we... We did it yesterday. It was Sunday. We 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 sort of said no. Turn turn TVs off. Get dressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we're going out. Yeah. And and of course we had a great time. That's amazing. You know. Yeah. But I think it's also trying to instill it being an enjoyable thing. Yeah. Um, as opposed to a chore and a punishment. And a punishment. Yeah. 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 So I think it's making it. This is family time. Yeah. And then you know you'll get something out of this because it, you'll have a chance to you know and, and it is inevitably a nice time. And a, an opportunity to talk to one another yeah. and actually talk and speak yeah. about things that are going on in our minds, you know, and there's always something. Yeah. You know, we've got teenagers. There's always something <laughs> they want to talk about. Um, so, yeah, so it is. And, you know, I'm very lucky. I live right down by the South Coast. You know, we talked earlier about going for walks. I will I have to go down to the seafront at some point every day to look out at the horizon, um, get my bearings. 
um <laughs> it's really you know that's really vital for me yeah. and so yeah i want to instill that in my kids as well i think it's a really lovely point that you know you want to make it like it's an enjoyable thing and you yeah. want to make it, it's family time and also give <clears throat> so and giving people the context is that it, giving kids the context of like why you want to actually do yeah. it it's, it's mm -hmm. not like you're not doing it to kind of be mean or anything no. like that. Yeah. And it's so interesting because teenagers, when they come to do walking therapy, they go, actually, yeah, I love walking. Yeah. They get a love for walking. You know, they're mm. kind of like, you know, I want to do more of this, you know? Well, my, my, my eldest is not sporty at all. He doesn't like any sport. It's not, you know, and, you know, getting him out of the house is sometimes difficult. But I know that something, walking is something he enjoys, you know, and he sometimes asks for it, you know. So we're, we're, we're working on mm. it and it's it seems to be coming to fruition <laughs> that's great yeah <laughs> well jonathan thank you so much for your time it's no, been it's, it's pleasure, been man. been beautiful to talk to you and yeah and um yeah keep walking yeah keep walking keep and walking. just so everyone can go out and buy it what's your book called where can people get it where can people find you on social media yeah so it's um uh, walk with your wolf walk with your wolf and you can get it on amazon um that's probably one of the best places to get it from yeah and it's in different translations as well so if you're if you're mm. dutch if you're spanish if you're german um i, I think there's one in japanese and chinese now lithuanian Amazing. romanian oh my yeah. yeah you yeah. Uh, translated them all yourself yeah. i didn't translate them <laughs> myself no <laughs> so, you know so one of my favorite ones in lithuanian i'm called jonathanus habanas ah, oh, nice. they actually changed your name they changed my oh. name jonathanus <laughs> habanas <laughs> yeah, <Brilliant. laughs> no, i think you should just keep that <laughs> it's yeah. very uh, Sounds tropical, exotic, so. yeah yeah yeah, exactly. So Amazon and uh, yeah, yeah, mm. it's online. Fab. And where can people find you on social media? Social media, um, I've got my website. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what is it? Uh, <laughs> www.jonathanhaven.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks, Jonathan. Pleasure. Thank you.